Hey, what's up everybody? Stan Condert from The Greek For All is here. In this video we are going to talk about the envelope construction. If you are serious about translating Biblical Greek, you cannot overlook this construction because it's literally everywhere in the New Testament. Before we jump into our study, please smash that like button, click that notification bell, because it helps the YouTube algorithm and our channel to grow. Now let's jump right into it. Alright, let's take a look at the construction. So here we see a Greek noun, Adelphos, um, a brother, with the definite article, uh, so the brother. And uh, in the previous videos we learned that the Greeks like to insert um, certain words in between the article and the word they modify. And uh, when we see the word de is standing between the article and uh, the word it modifies, we begin with this word, so we translate it as but and then we jump to the article and the word it modifies first uh, here but the brother so this is how we work with this construction but what if i told you that uh, greeks like to insert not just one word in between here but sometimes two three four five six and more words in between the article and the word it modifies so this is what we're gonna study in this lesson let's take a look so this is the construction we have the article and we have the word and um, in between we will see a lot of words written and um, the construction I'm going to talk about today is a prepositional phrase here. So prepositional phrase uh, inserted in between the article and uh, a word. And this prepositional phrase can be as long as three, four, five, six words. Uh, so when we see this construction, how do we translate it? First we begin with the article. So from the article we go to the word it modifies and then it goes back to the beginning of the prepositional phrase and we translate the prepositional phrase. So this is how it goes. It's like a circle. So this is why it's called the envelope construction. It kind of envelopes the phrase inside. In my example we have an article and uh, the noun, but these words could be actually anything. So it can be a noun. It can be an adjective or it can be a participle. So it also can be in any gender number and case. So it can be in the nominative case, genitive, dative or accusative cases. Anything can be here. So again I want to remind, first we go here, then we translate the word and at the very end we translate the phrase in between. So now as we know the structure of this construction and the steps we need to take to translate it, let's go into the Bible and put this knowledge into practice. And uh, the first example comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14. It's actually a very famous text, uh, most of us know it by heart, so let's read it. Kaito Angelo tes en Laodikeia Ecclesias Grabson. So let's uh, translate Kai and to Angelo to the angel. So this is dative singular. This is our addressee, the dative case uh, means our addressee. So to the angel tes en Laodikeia Ecclesias. This is our construction. And here we have imperative, which means right, right. So, and to the angel write, so now let's work with our construction, so this is our article, it's genitive case, so we need to add of, and it modifies this word ecclesias, which is a noun, so first we go here and then we jump to the church, so and to the angel of the church, and then we go back, in Laodicea, right, very simple, nothing complex, beautiful illustration how this uh, construction works. So again, and to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right. And uh, the second example is also from the book of Revelation, chapter 14. Let's read. Makarioi hoi nekroi hoi en curio apatneskontes. So let's translate Makarioi, blessed, blessed, uh, hoi nekroi, blessed, the dead. So this Makarioi is an adjective and um, 
it has um, no article so it's a predicative adjective we need to insert the verb to be so blessed are the dead and here is our construction so as you read this Greek text you come to this article and you kind of expect to have um, a noun or an adjective or something but suddenly you see this preposition n and then n curio so this is a prepositional phrase so when you see that the article is followed by the prepositional phrase not always but but most likely we're going to have a sandwich construction. So you try to go beyond the prepositional phrase and see whether this word uh, agrees with this article in gender, number and case, because the article and the word it modifies always agree with each other in gender, number and case. And indeed, both this article and this uh, participle, in this case it's a participle, are masculine plural nominative. So they agree. So this is a envelope construction which we study. So we translate first the article, then we jump to the participle. This participle is um, a present participle from the verb apathnesco, I die. So here we translate this phrase as uh, the ones who die and then we go back here in the Lord. So let's put everything together. Blessed are the dead, the ones who die in the Lord. Or we could simplify it. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Make sure you watch the video till the end because there I included an example which will just blow your mind away. But you need to gradually grow into that example. So keep watching. Another beautiful example, this time from the book of Titus, chapter 3. Let us read. Aspazantai se hoi metamu pantes. So aspazantai is a verb. So we'll just write that this is a verb. Se means you and this is the accusative case. So this is the direct object of this verb. Now we need a subject and the subject comes in the nominative case. So this is a nominative case article and uh, it modifies this adjective. Here in the middle we have a prepositional phrase, meta mu. If you are not uh, familiar with the prepositions, I have a series of six videos on prepositions. Please check them on my channel. So meta mu means with me. So pantes means all and together with this article they form the substantive use of adjectives. We translate it as all people. This is masculine plural. So all people, all people with me or all people who are with me. This is how we translate and this entire phrase is our subject. Okay, so all people with me as padzantai greet you. So this is our verb. It's a third person plural ending. So uh, the number is plural and the number of the verb always agrees with the number of your subject in number. So both of them are plural. So again, all people who are with me greet you. And again, another example in the book of Revelation, Revelation 12, 12. For this reason, rejoice, hoi uranoi, kai hoi en autois skenuntes. So, um, rejoice, hoi uranoi, this is vocative case, rejoice the heavens, this is plural, so not one heaven, but the heavens, kai and hoi en autois in them, autois in them, hoi skenuntes another participle here, present participle, from skineo, I dwell, I abide, so and the ones who dwell in them, in them meaning the heavens, so rejoice the heavens and those who dwell in them. So again we go here, then we jump here and then finally here. Another example from the book of Revelation, this time chapter 18, I guess by this time you already know I love the book of Revelation and you cannot read this book if you don't know this construction. It literally fills every chapter. So uh, let's read. Hoi basileis tes ges, hoi met autes, porneosantes. So let's see what we have. Hoi basileis, so this is the subject, the kings, 
the king's test guess this is genitive uh, singular so we need to insert of right here so the kings of the earth we have another plural masculine nominative article and again here we have a participle this time it is a aorist participle so um, we translate it as the ones who fornicated or the ones who committed adultery met autes with her with her meaning with the babylon who is the harlot so um, this is how we translate again we start here we go to our word and then we jumped back and translate our prepositional phrase right so this is the way so now let's put everything together the kings of the earth the ones who fornicated with her or um, the kings of the earth who fornicated with her and uh, this is our final example again from the book of revelation chapter 19 this one has seven words in between the article and the word it modifies so let's see what we have here makarioi hoi eisto deipnon tu gamu tu arniu keklemenoi so again we have the word makarioi we have seen this word before it means blessed so blessed are blessed are and now we have our construction okay this is our article masculine plural nominative and this is another participle also masculine um, plural nominative and this is the perfect uh, participle we see the reduplication ke from the verb kaleo i call uh, so um, uh, blessed are so we need to insert are blessed are the ones who are invited or the ones who are called and now we have our prepositional phrase which is very very long so called to uh, the deipnon deipnon means supper supper so supper or a dinner so blessed um, those who are called to the supper supper to gamu of of the marriage or of the wedding to our new of the lamb so all of these are genitive singular so we need to insert this ofs here so into the supper of the marriage of the lamb so now let's put everything together blessed are those who are invited or those who have been invited into the supper of the marriage of the lamb so on this positive note i wish you all the best to stay faithful so you are also gonna be invited to that supper of the wedding of the lamb if you enjoyed this video and it helped you to learn, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. And if you leave a comment for me, something positive, what you enjoyed in this video, it really gives me an energy and motivation and encouragement to create more videos like this so you could learn more. On this positive note, I wish you nothing less than success. Learn Greek, love God. I'll see you in the next video.